Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of News Dabs. I'm Jimmy Young for the Cannabis Multimedia Network. We look for the most interesting stories that relate to the emerging cannabis industry from here in Massachusetts to Washington, D.C. to the global community. We start with the challenges of identifying drivers who are under the influence. Notice I didn't say cannabis, because whether you were driving under the influence of opioids, alcohol, or cannabis, any type of mind-altering substance, you are putting your passengers and your fellow drivers at risk. Law enforcement does not have an accurate way to test those suspected of driving under the influence, but now at least there will be a media campaign to educate the public about that message about driving under the influence of cannabis. Perhaps you should think twice before you get behind the wheel after you've dabbed or had a hit off a joint. Check out the latest public service campaign produced by the Ad Council. Hey, can you chop the pineapple? Chop the pineapple. Nope, I'm high. How about I wash off the grapes? Yes. Okay. You're already making good decisions when you're high. I want tacos. Will you drive? I'm a little toasty. Nope, I'm high. Let's order in. Don't make an exception when it comes to driving. If you feel different, you drive different. Okay, so the dream sequence with the violent slicing of the pineapple was a little much, but let's face it, that message needs something like that to be effective. Operating under the influence was one of the talking points this week on In the Weeds that I had with Valerio Romano, an attorney for Vicente Cedarberg, a national cannabis firm. You still rely on officers' training and experience right now, and you don't have like a, a really solid field sobriety test, you know, like a breathalyzer they have for alcohol. We don't have that for cannabis yet, mm -hmm. you know. And it would, I think you're going through the list, you know, of, of major, major opposition points, right? So, you know, gateway drug, kids, now you're on, you know, driving under the influence and mm -hmm. how to test for that. Um, and this is one of the things that I hear all the time. I would say that, like I said before, cannabis is everywhere anyway. Um, we're trying to tax and regulate it and educate people on it. The, the legalization of cannabis or the ending of prohibition in Massachusetts didn't change the laws about driving under the influence. Right. You know, so and, people and, can still be arrested and charged and convicted and serve custody time for driving under the influence, whether it's cannabis or any other substance. So nothing that we've done has changed any of that. And I don't think it's contributed to it either. So you go with education and reality checks. It worked for a generation of younger people who understand the dangers of driving under the influence of alcohol. And now, of course, they're trying it again with another substance. Let's check out that Massachusetts State Tote Board for sales this week of cannabis in the Bay State. And you will find that a milestone has been reached. Now, even though daily figures are not available yet, the total gross sales sold in the Commonwealth has now exceeded $100 million since sales began on November 20th. That, of course, was $104 million total. The total has been going up by some $7 million every week for a while now. So here's a few cannabis business news dabs for you. Curaleaf, located here in Massachusetts, has just sealed the largest acquisition between two U.S.-based cannabis companies in a straight stock deal. Curaleaf acquires Cura Partners, a maker of oil for vape pens, for $950 million all in stock. Curaleaf also signed an option to buy Ohio Grown Therapies, a cultivation and processing licensee in Ohio. In Colorado, lawmakers there approved a measure that will allow all physicians to recommend cannabis as an alternative to opioids. And one final news dab today, there have been quite a few different people on the cover of the Rolling Stone magazine, and this week is no different. The cover man for their annual weed edition is Willie Nelson, puffing away on his vape. They're celebrating Willie Nelson's 86th birthday, and now you know why he's always smiling. Remember, it's a whole new world of weed out there. I'm Jimmy Young for the Cannabis Multimedia Network, and once again, we leave you with some cannabis-friendly events in the greater Boston area over the next few weeks. Yeah.